Do you want to maximize your gains in the crypto market? Then you need to avoid some of these mistakes. Mistakes that you could even be making right now. What? My name is Guy, and in this guide, I'll be diving deep into the top 10 mistakes that crypto investors so often make. Mistakes that could cost you big time. I made a mistake. So stick around because this video could be the difference between turning a profit or having your fortunes swept from under your feet. The first big mistake people make is not doing their own research before investing. Now, we get it. It's easy to get caught up in the hype, especially if your friend Degenerate Dave is making bank and telling you about an altcoin that's guaranteed to 100x. You're hepped up on hopium and desperate to get in on the action. But ladies and gents, don't fall into the trap. Take your time to do your research. Learn about exchanges. Learn how to store your crypto safely. Learn about your tax liabilities and definitely, definitely do your homework on crypto projects. It sounds so obvious, but time and again, people don't do the basics. Now, we have an entire video on how to do your own research properly, and we will link to it in the description below. But I'll summarize the main points here. So when it comes to researching projects, there are two key things to look out for. First, is it a legit project? And second, what is the token allocation? So to do this, we recommend you start by checking out the coin or token on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. Sift through the data, paying particular attention to the price action and trading volume. The trading volume should be significant. You want to make sure people are actually buying and selling the token. And it should be on at least one reputable exchange. Now, once you're assured that the fundamentals are in order, it's time to deep dive into the secondary sources. You should research the crypto on platforms like Masari, Binance Research, Coinbureau.com, etc., etc. These are excellent primers that should be able to give you a broad overview of the project, key team members, and their vision. In particular, check out the profile section of the cryptocurrency on Masari for things like the project's history, token allocation, and so on. On that note, token allocation is something you should pay close attention to. A good sign is when the tokens are widely distributed to the community. A red flag is when most of the tokens are held by a few people, usually the founders. Next, you should do your due diligence on the founder, CEO, and other key team members. Research them and see if there are any videos with key personnel on YouTube. Past interviews can be hugely informative and help you know if they're implementing their vision or are a bit scattered. Naturally, it's a good sign when they're delivering on their roadmap. Now, by this point, you should have all the information you need to determine whether the project is legit and has legs. So far, so good. Now, the second mistake we see newcomers and even some old hands in crypto making is picking the wrong exchange. There are different degrees of mistakes you can make when it comes to choosing an exchange. The first thing you should look out for, of course, are signs that the exchange in question is legit. Time and again, we hear of people falling victim to exchanges that turn out to be scams. So be careful of paid ads for exchanges. Even if they are on reputable news sites, do your research. What are people saying about them on Reddit, on Twitter, and other forums? Who are the founders? Have they been around for a long time? Just like doing your own research when it comes to specific crypto projects, you have to do the same when it comes to exchanges, especially lesser known ones. Then you need to know if the exchange is compatible with your investment strategy. By this, I mean, does the exchange offer the tokens you're seeking to buy? If you're going to invest solely in large cap tokens, then pretty much every exchange will have you covered. But if you're seeking small caps, which are higher risk but offer potentially eye-watering returns, well, you'll have to be more selective when it comes to exchanges. Now, some exchanges offer many hundreds of coins and tokens, which is pretty impressive. However, Coinbase's selection, for instance, is far smaller in the low hundreds. 
But Coinbase is highly regulated and, as a public company in the United States, has to have the most robust security procedures going. Many other exchanges are not subject to anything like that degree of scrutiny and therefore can't be as trustworthy. As well as security and coin allocation, you should also see if the exchange's functionality suits the type of trader you are. If you're a newcomer, it might make sense to go for an exchange with a simple interface. If you're more experienced, then make sure the exchange has the trading tools you're looking for. Some exchanges have basic and advanced versions, so you should be covered regardless of your level. But shop around. And side note, I have to say that one of my pet peeves in crypto at the moment is how fiddly and difficult some exchange interfaces are to use. This is especially the case for newcomers, but they can even be a challenge for experienced crypto folk. Now, we won't onboard hundreds of millions of new users if they are not going to be comfortable with using many of the exchange platforms out there. Sure. They might go to one of those exchanges that has done the work to make a more beginner-friendly interface, but they might also be put off altogether. So, if you happen to work at an exchange and are watching this, take note. I think we all know who some of the main offenders are when it comes to UI and UX. OK, rant over. For now. Moving on. Last but not least, make sure that the exchange you're considering supports your currency and doesn't have crazy trading fees. Seriously, nothing takes the sheen off of a good day's trading like heavy trading fees, especially when there are cheaper alternatives out there. And speaking of trading fee discounts, if you want to bag ones of up to 60%, then you have to go and check out the Coin Bureau deals page linked to below. Not only do we have that on offer, but some of the exchange deals also include sign-up bonuses of up to $40,000. It's a limited time deal, so be sure to take advantage of it when you can. So, it's really important to make sure that you are using the right exchange. And if you're still struggling to find the right one, then our video where we compare the top six exchanges on the market is a must. That's linked to in the top right here. On to our next mistake, though, and that is not having a plan. Remember Benjamin Franklin's quote, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Well, this certainly is the case in crypto. Too often, we see people getting carried away with emotions when they're investing. They hold on just a little too long and end up with nothing but regrets. Avoid this by having a strategy, a solid strategy is your roadmap. It guides your investment moves in a way that's thought out and not just a shot in the dark. It's your guardrail against making hasty, heat-of-the-moment trades. With a great strategy in place and the discipline to follow it, you'll be on autopilot and avoid getting knocked off track by FUD and FOMO. So, how do you whip up a killer strategy? Well, it's very person-specific. You need something that works for you. But luckily, there are a few guidelines that can help. First off, figure out what you're aiming for. And I'm talking specific, measurable targets, not just some pie-in-the-sky fantasy. When determining your goals, be sure they align with how much risk you're comfortable with. If you're young and without dependents, you might go heavier into crypto than someone who's older with a family to support. As for your crypto portfolio, you must decide how much risk you want to take on. Should you allocate more of your portfolio to smaller cap alts instead of safer large cap coins, which carry less risk but also less growth potential? Also, should you hodl or actively trade? Again, it depends on your risk reward calculation. Hodling is the safer bet but is less likely to bring you crazy returns. Now, regardless of the strategy you choose, remember one thing. Only invest what you can afford to lose. And don't, under any circumstances, borrow money to invest. It just isn't worth it. And if you're new to investing, avoid the temptation of using high leverage. This is one of the quickest ways for newcomers, and indeed anyone, to get wrecked trading crypto. And finally, make sure to take profits along the way. This must be one of the most common regrets I hear when people talk about their investments. 
Build this into your strategy. You'll thank yourself later. Right, you've done your homework, you've made a plan, and you're executing it. Great job. The next two common mistakes I see relate to security. The first of these relates to self-custody. For those who need a refresher, self-custody means you are in full control of your crypto by storing it in a crypto wallet that only you control. It's the crypto equivalent of keeping your cash in your own safe instead of a bank. Self-custodial wallets are the way to go. So, if you're new to crypto, you might be wondering, why shouldn't I keep my money on a centralized exchange like Coinbase, Kraken, KuCoin, whatever? Well, if you're active trading, it may make sense to keep some amount on these platforms for convenience. But anytime you hold your assets online with third parties, there are risks. First, you must trust the entity in question. Although most of the industry is clean, there are some bad actors out there. Remember, it's not that long ago that Sam Bankman-Fried was crypto's golden boy and his FTX empire was widely admired. No one saw it coming, and plenty of people lost big money. You just can't be too careful, unfortunately. The second risk with centralized exchanges is that even if they are trusted and are doing everything in their power to keep your assets safe, they can never guarantee that a hack won't happen. In fact, more than $4 billion has been stolen from various exchanges and custodians in recent years, as Trezor's CEO Matej Zak told me recently. And no exchange is too large to be affected. Even Binance suffered a hack back in 2019, and that was despite its extensive security protocols. Crypto exchanges are basically massive honeypots for hackers and offer huge rewards to those who can crack their security systems. There will always be bad guys looking to exploit them. Then you need to consider things like regulatory risks. Exchanges operating in uncertain legal environments may face sudden shutdowns or asset freezes by authorities, which can mean investors are unable to access their funds. And this isn't as rare as you might think. In 2021, for instance, South Korea shut down 11 exchanges which were accused of being involved in fraud. And lastly, there is always the risk of bankruptcy and insolvency. If that happens, user assets could be jeopardized. That's even more likely if an exchange doesn't conduct proof of reserve audits. And if you're unfamiliar with what those are, we have a video on that as well. But you get the point. For all of these reasons, it just isn't worth the risk of holding assets on exchanges. To borrow a line from the great Benjamin Cowan, quote, treat exchanges like public toilets. Get in, do your business, and get out. So what should you do instead? Well, self-custody your crypto is the answer to that question. And by that, we mean send that crypto to an offline wallet to which you hold the keys. And if you want the best option of all, then you need to consider a hardware wallet, like a Trezor, Engrave, or a Ledger. It's still quite shocking to see how small the proportion of crypto users that use hardware wallets actually is. According to reports, at least 295 million people across the world use crypto, yet Ledger and Trezor, the two primary hardware wallet manufacturers, have just 5 million users between them. Now, if you don't know what hardware wallets are or which are the best ones to use, then we have you covered there as well. I'll leave links to our videos and articles in the description. We also have some great discounts on wallets for you in the deals page too, so don't forget to check that out. And this leads us on to the next classic security blunder. Too often, people fail to back up seed phrases and passwords. Now, a seed phrase, in case you need a reminder, is the series of words generated by your crypto wallet. They act as a master key to access and recover your funds. In the event of device failure, loss, or theft, your seed phrase is the only way to regain access to your assets stored in the wallet. Now, I get it. It's a hassle to keep hard copies of all your seed phrases and passwords. But again, we're talking about your money here, folks. It's better to be safe than sorry. And it's very important that these are physical backups. Do not, under any circumstances, save seed words in a digital form on your device. It is a surefire way to get your crypto swiped by malware or hackers. 
Now, you could go the paper backup route, or even better, engrave it on a steel card, but make sure to keep that info under lock and key. But that's not all. You should also think of your exchange accounts. You should use two factor authentication, of course. But how many of you have jotted down the backup code for resetting this? Lose your phone, and you're locked out of your account. It's a headache of a verification process to get back in. So avoid the anguish by writing down those codes and keeping them in a locked box with your seed phrases. Easy. Now, the next two most common mistakes relate to risk. To really nail those long term crypto gains, smart risk management is your best friend. It's easy to get caught up in the moment, make snap decisions, and stray from your original game plan. And in a bull market when prices are going bananas, keeping a cool head is super important. So, having a risk management strategy that fits your investing style is crucial. Again, for all investors, only invest what you're okay losing. If you're more of an active trader, think about setting up stop losses and take profits. These automatically close your position at your chosen levels. They help you take profits while the going is good and prevent greater losses when the going gets rough. It's a no brainer, and it means you don't need to monitor the markets obsessively. Now, the last thing we'll say about risk management is that you should view everything through a risk lens, not just trading, but also off ramping. Here is where we see a lot of folks trip up. They send funds to an exchange on the wrong blockchain. It's a really common mistake and one that is so avoidable. Crypto transactions are irreversible. Sometimes, with cooperation from the wallet provider or exchange, you can undo the damage, but it's not guaranteed and is sure to be stressful. Avoid all of that by sending a test amount first to make sure the funds are successfully transferred. Yes, you will have to pay gas fees, but it really is a small price to pay considering the risks. Closely connected to risk management is one of the most widespread concerns in crypto getting duped by scams. Again, it's vital to DYOR when it comes to scams. Operate with a healthy degree of skepticism and keep your antennae up. It's important to educate yourself to be able to spot some common scam tactics. Here, we'll briefly mention a few. You've got your Ponzi schemes. Now, these are projects based on bugger all foundations that operate for a time on promises of big returns, only to collapse when new investment stops coming in. Scammers will also try and lure you to dodgy investment platforms where your money goes in but never comes out again. Then there are phishing attacks, that's phishing with a PH, where scammers set up phony websites or send you emails that look legit, all to swipe your private keys or wallet passwords. And Let's not forget pig butchering, one of the nastiest scams of all. This is when someone establishes an online relationship with their victim and then persuades them to send money or reveal their financial information. It's basically the Tinder swindler, creepy AF. And I should also stress at this point that neither I nor anyone on the Coin Bureau team will ever reach out to you directly, romantically or otherwise. Sorry to disappoint. Crypto scams often misuse my name and face to trick my followers. I've seen fake Telegram channels, WhatsApp groups, and Twitter profiles. There could be fake Tinder profiles for all I know. So ignore, delete, and definitely swipe left. Seriously, getting scammed is awful. It's not only bad for your bottom line, it's bound to take a toll on your mental health as well. If you want to find out more about this and what to do if you're hacked, I'll leave a link to a video on the topic below. Now, the next three blunders are psychological. While you should listen to your gut and your heart in some aspects of your life, when it comes to investing, keep the emotions out and focus on the space between your ears. FOMO, yes, that dreaded fear of missing out, often plays a sly game with investors. Comparison is the thief of joy, said Teddy Roosevelt. And he was right when it comes to happiness, but the same can be said for investing. When the candlesticks are green, prices are pumping, and your friends are doing well, it's so easy to forget your strategy and get sidelined. 
This is made all the worse by social media, with people striking it rich overnight and convincing narratives about prices reaching a certain target. Remember, in the last bull run, many people thought BTC would hit $100,000. It didn't. But the narrative caught on and people didn't take profits when they should have done. So again, having a strategy that's based on your risk appetite and strong research is the way to go. Ignore what others are doing, if you can. And this ties in neatly with the next mistake, inflated expectations, especially among newcomers. These inflated expectations can often lead to major disappointment. If you think of crypto investments as a get-rich-quick scheme, well, you're likely to get burned. When expectations are not met, especially in the short term, investors often make poor decisions. These include panic selling during market dips or investing in high-risk assets without adequate risk assessment. That's why having and sticking to a strategy is so important. Stay patient and disciplined, and you're more likely to do well. And if you do do well in crypto, please, folks, for the love of all things holy, don't go bragging about it. It's crass to brag, but that's not why I'm saying this. If you brag about your wealth, you could find yourself on the end of some unwanted attention. There are some horrific stories about people who bragged online about their crypto fortunes being targeted by criminals. So just don't do it. Keep your gains to yourself. And finally, the tenth mistake we find people making too often is giving up early and missing out on potential gains. The market's tendency to fluctuate sharply can be daunting, and those unprepared for such volatility might hastily sell off assets during downturns, risking losses. Bailing out early could leave you missing out on potential upswings. Talk about FOMO. The most resilient investors are those who weather the storms, learning and adjusting their strategies as they go. It helps if you take a long-term view. Prices might fluctuate dramatically in the short term, but remember, when in doubt, zoom out. When you take a longer horizon, things don't look so bleak in a bear market. Sometimes you just have to hold on for dear life and wait for your fortunes to skyrocket. Of course, a balance should be struck, and if you're taking profits in accordance with the strategy that we mentioned earlier, that's great. But don't let short-term market movements divert you on your journey. And keep the perspective on how far crypto has come. Team Coin Bureau wishes you well on your journey. So there you have it, folks. But what do you think? We would love to hear your feedback. As always, we'll leave useful links in the description below. These will help you DYOR and determine your risk and trading strategies. Before you go, though, if you found this video helpful, then smash up that like button and hit subscribe. Also, head on over to our deals page for the best deals in town, including up to $40,000 in bonuses and discounts on hardware wallets. OK, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.